G'day and welcome to Prop Maker. This is the channel that helps you make stuff, restore stuff and repair stuff. We're going to continue on this week with our Fishtails pinball machine. Some people were asking exactly how the hell I found out which little tiny capacitor on that circuit board that was just behind here Just how I worked out exactly which capacitor it had something wrong. I'm going to show you right now. You're watching Prop Maker. Roll the thing. But how did I know that I needed continuity from one point to the other? Um, I mean, apart from see, physically seeing lines on the circuit board, sometimes those lines are on the other side. Sometimes on some, or some brand new sort of uh, Euro circuit boards, there might be traces that are actually inside uh, the circuit board on multi-layer or three or four layer circuits. So this, this one's pretty easy. I could actually see traces. So that's pretty good. But how did I know where these traces needed to go to? And how did I know about this particular component being dodgy and why it was actually linked to TP3, this test point over here, um, and this fuse that I was actually having trouble with? Well, I used a thing called a schematic. These are the manuals that actually come with, uh, with fishtails. And most pinball machines will come with a manual some of them will come with their schematics as well and that's really 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 handy so the operations manual it actually has all the operational features and where the lamps are and all the sorts of operational features of of a pinball machine the schematics however are like a map of how the circuit works so looking at our uh our issue, our issue was with the power driver board schematic, and that's on page two. Now I know that this particular, let's have a look, power two. So the cool thing about these schematic books is actually they're big fold out maps on each page. So I'm gonna open this one up. Now some pinball machines like, uh, like Gottlieb, for instance, will actually, you'll have to actually purchase schematics from uh, a reseller or a seller that's been licensed to actually buy them. But Williams actually allow you to view this stuff up online. And you can have a look at this schematic, actually, if you go to IPDB and actually look up fishtails and you can actually see the schematics in a PDF format if you want. I'm lucky to have the actual paper format that came with the pinball machine. So... I'm going to actually have a look at my schematic here and we're going to find TP3. And we can see it on the schematic down here. We have TP3. So TP3, all I did to figure out what was actually going wrong with this was I just followed the wires along. So I know it went down here and along here, went through fuse 115 which was the fuse that we're talking about. That one over, over there. That's where there's my finger there. That one there. And so 115 is our fuse. And then right next to it, we have C2, a capacitor. That's the symbol for a capacitor. And that capacitor goes to ground. And also this power regulator, which is the other thing that I replaced, is right next to it. And you can see it's a 7812. And that's called Q2. So C2 and Q2 were the things that I was suspecting. Now the reason why I suspected those and not anything else that's in this tree or in this line was that over here on TP8, if you remember in the last video, TP8 was actually giving me my full 18 volts. Well, 16 of those 18 volts. So I knew that this one was actually getting its power. And if you follow this up, we have some diodes which make sure that the power goes basically in the right direction. 
And so if this was getting power, but this uh, over here was not, I knew that the problem need to, needed to be around here somewhere. And so C2 and Q2 were my suspects. And so once I uh, just went in and just like, at the end of the day, this is like a, you know, a 50 cent uh, part. This one's like a, a few bucks part. It's better off just to replace them and actually just see whether things work rather than actually try and decipher whether this particular part works or not. Just go in and, and replace those. So I did that, but things still weren't working. So that's when I started looking at the corrosion that this capacitor, after it had leaked, what corrosion could have happened. And the problem that I found was it was this line that goes from here through to here. So once I restored that with my wire, it all, it all went fine. So that's how it was. That's how you read ba the basics of a schematic. Now the schematics will cover absolutely everything and there's pages and pages of all the different sections of, uh, of this uh, machine. So for instance, when we were looking at our sound driver board, which is down near the end here, Soundboard, sheet one. So if I have a look at my soundboard sheet, let's open that one up. Now what ended up being a problem was U9. And I'm just going to, I, I initially suspected the, di the digital analog converter, but at the end of the day, that didn't quite um, uh, check out. So that's why we actually, I, I actually went out to uh, Russell's and, um, and started actually looking at um, the, the board trading parts into his fish tails to see whether I could actually ascertain which one of these many chips, and these chips are sort of, uh, displayed here um, like, like these. I just didn't know which of these chips might be the absolute, absolute, uh, actual issue. Now, the, the reference that I had was um, U19, and U19 is actually a RAM chip, and that's what it ended up being. So now, retrospectively, after I did the actual hardware checks, going back into here, I can actually see why the sound wasn't working, because this is U19, and none of these uh, none of these chips actually work. When I checked ground and actually looked at the other um, uh, things, ground actually wasn't even connected to ground. So I thought uh, um, I thought maybe my fix isn't going to work. Maybe it's actually a problem with the trace going from this chip to ground. Luckily, when I repinned this and put a socket on it. Um, it didn't have uh, a problem with this trace going to ground, so I was very, very lucky that you know, this chip was actually uh, pretty good once I put the socket in and put this brand new chip in, suddenly everything worked. So I was very, very happy that that was, um, that that was the case. So U19 um, I thought had a problem with ground and that was all that the problem was, but obviously it was the chip itself. So um, replacing it was the best way to go. So I hope that actually explains a little bit about how uh, we can decipher or diagnose what's actually wrong with uh, some of these solid state machines. The, sometimes the only way to actually fix any of these machines, whether they're solid state, uh, uh, electromechanical or uh, the, the very, very um, uh, early ones, uh, sometimes the only option is to actually look at the schematic and see what you can actually ascertain. So, like for instance, in Jungle Lord, um, there were wires that, um, that I had to follow the schematic in order to find where the, where, which wire was controlling 
what particular part on the play field. What I actually had was a problem uh, where part of the play field was just not operating at all. And, but there was power going to the wire at the very top of the back box. And there seemed to be power all the way underneath the play field. But the schematic told me the colors of those wires so that I could actually start checking the wire all the way along the wire. And I could actually find where the break was in the wire by eventually um, testing each part of that wire to make sure that uh, power was getting to it. And I eventually fixed that particular wire. On a different one, I still couldn't decipher it. And with Jungle Lord, it allowed me to also see where the power was coming from, what that wire should be. And I, even though I couldn't find the issue, I ran another wire uh, that paralleled the one that was there and followed that color all the way through to the play field. And then it fixed that part. So I was uh, pretty happy. And the only way I could do that was with schematics just like these so that's how we did it schematics are the answer and the key and the map to all of this stuff you don't really need to know full um, uh, full electronic knowledge in order to interpret some of the symbols that you see on here you can actually put these symbols or even take um, uh, take a photo of some of these symbols and actually put them into Google and they'll actually tell you what those symbols mean. So it's actually very, very handy. So with that, thanks for joining this one's a quick one. You've been watching PropMaker. Use those schematics. Like and subscribe. See you later. Roll the thing.